Clive, which markets are more amenable to technical analysis than others? Every market trades differently and has a different personality so you can't apply the same technical analysis to Brent crude as you would to, to short sterling so and that's obviously a, a thing that comes with experience well the very simple way to answer chris's question is this i have over the years been asked to analyze all sorts of different markets that I've never really looked at before. Can you do technical analysis? I did some work for CME and CBOT back in late in, in 2005 to 2010. And they said, can you do charts and analysis on the ag score? So I went, yeah, I'll, I'll give it a go. I never looked at them before. I never looked at a soybean chart in my life. But I'll, yeah, OK, fine. When I started doing the energy markets and I was doing a white label for the broker GFI and they said, can you look at coal? Can you look at carbon? Can you look at gas? All these things that I'd never looked at in my life. And I said, yeah, and I said the same thing. I went, I'll just use the toolbox that I use and I'll learn on the fly and we'll see how it goes. It worked out very well. If I had to choose what markets are more amenable uh, to technical analysis than others, I would say as a rule of thumb, if a market has very mixed fundamentals, then people tend to look at the technicals a little bit more. So there you have a market where the fundamentals sort of are quite solid or well covered analyst wise, then that can using the technicals alongside the fundamentals can work well. But if you've got a market and one example is carbon emissions, I've sat with panels, conferences about carbon, where people have said completely the opposite. Two fundamentalists have said completely the opposite. One said it should be zero, one said it should be a hundred. And, and someone came up to me and said to me, uh, said, why I why they think technicals work is because because no one's got a bloody clue about fundamentals. <laughs> what different range of tools do you use during the course of a day's technical analysis? Yeah, my approach is in very basic terms, two pronged, though, which is candlestick analysis on all sorts of different time frames. <laughs> And I overlay that with Chicago's favourite way of uh, looking at charts, which is market profile, which you managed to cleverly sneak into the title of, uh, of our little chat here. And market profile was developed in the States and in very basic terms, volume at price analysis. It tells you what volume has gone through at each level and whether you have certain price levels uh, where there's a lot of activity or conversely, very little activity, because price, the auction process of price moving up and down to attract buyers and sellers and to balance supply and demand, does see prices magnetized, what's the word I'm looking for? Gravitating back towards breaking through low volume areas and just going bang. And so, so that combine the two pretty successfully, I guess, because clients keep coming back for more. Um, and so, yeah, that's very much my approach is, is profile and candlesticks um, overlaid, if you like. To what extent are you maintaining the true principles of technical analysis and adapting to circumstances such as herd mentality tweets in the same way most financial markets <laughs> adapt and react to a changing world? Technical analysis is the study of the herd. One of the main tenets of technical analysis is that everything known about a market at any one time is in the price. And obviously a tweet can change that for sure. But one of the things that technical analysis assumes is that market trends, markets move in trends and trends persist. And trends are created by the herd. And excesses are created by the herd getting greedy or fearful. 